Consultants just can't stop making this mistake when selling, and it's costing you a lot of business. I'm Jay Kingley, the CEO of Maven. Even average consultants have expertise to solve client problems in their wheelhouse. Some do better by providing insights that change how clients think about the issues that are urgent and important to them. And a select few offer wisdom that can change the game for their clients. You believe that clients will want to work with you if you can offer your perspective on where they are and then show them your vision for where they should be. You need to inspire them to go beyond where they are and get to a promised land that they should want to enter. And your prospects need to see you as their Moses who can get them there. Now do this during your sales process and you'll struggle to turn prospects into clients. It sets you up as the proverbial salesperson from the get-go, puts you across the table rather than on the same side and is adversarial rather than collaborative. Instead, embrace this. Meet your prospects where they are and then lead them as fast as they are willing and able to where they want to be. Your job during your sales process is to get them into their promised land, not into yours. No matter how great you are at what you do, no one will want to work with you if they don't feel that you get them. Empathy trumps expertise every time. Last week, I had an in-depth conversation with Ethan. Ethan started his own consulting practice as a fractional COO about nine months ago. He's had enough conversations with prospects to know that magic wasn't happening on the sales front. I told him that I've been talking to consultants and fractional leaders for years, and when it comes to client acquisition, I noticed they fall into one of four groups. Here's how I took him through it. Along this arrow, Ethan, I am going to put the four groups that I see. Now, at the bottom, we have price. And by price, what I mean is that when you're talking to prospects very quickly, they want to understand what it's going to cost to have you work with them. Above cost, we have return on investment. Now, in this bucket, your clients have a very clear view of what the problem is that they need you to solve. And they know what the value to them is of solving that problem. What they need to understand is what's it going to cost them so that they can calculate the return, the value to them over the investment, what it's going to cost to bring you in to solve it. Now, of course, it's a little more nuanced than that because they're also going to assess their degree of confidence in your ability to get the job done in the time frame that you specify. So they, in effect, will risk adjust the ROI of you compared to everyone else they talk about to get a common baseline that incorporates risk. In the third category, we have what I call cheap at 10 times your price. And you know you're in this group when, you, when after you tell your client what it is that you charge, their reaction very genuinely is, that's cheap. That's a whole lot less than I expected. That's a really good deal. Now, this comes about typically when your client has symptoms and issues that are both important and urgent. They've tried a lot of things to solve it, but they now have realized they don't even understand what the problem is let alone how to solve it. So here the degree of difficulty is much higher because they need you to initially diagnose what the problem is and then assess what is the best way to solve it. At the very top, we have invaluable. And invaluable occurs when you sit and you talk with your client, typically someone in the C-suite, typically about an issue that can be transformative, be that to their company, the marketplace, or their industry. They recognize that you can help them refine and implement their vision. They desperately want to work with you. They ask you, when can you start? You reach an agreement. 
They say, great, looking forward to it. Oh, by the way, send over whatever paperwork you need us to fill out and meetings over. And you realize they never once asked you what your price was, because in truth, the value of what they're after is so far beyond the price. It's inconceivable, provided you have honesty and integrity, that there's any price that you could put there that would cause them to change their mind. So then I said to Ethan, tell me where you think you are now based on the conversations you have with your prospects. And what Ethan said to me is, he's right there. People come to him with problems. They need someone with expertise to solve them. And he is their man. I then said to Ethan, where would you like to be? And he thought about it for a moment and he said, this would not be a bad place for me. So this is where he's at. This is where he wants to be. And this is the gap. Arguably, this was the most important thing I needed to know in my sales process. The gap between where he was and where he wanted to be. And the great part was, it was the gap that he believed, not what I thought it was or should be. My point of view was irrelevant. After we talked a bit about his gap, I asked him if he would like to explore what he could do to close it. Smiling, he said, absolutely. Ethan was another of my prospects that would soon turn into a paying client. Once your prospect becomes your client, inspire them to reach their full potential and go from where they want to be to where they can be. Meeting your prospects where they are is the key to turning them into clients. Now, once they are clients, inspiring them to achieve their full potential is how you retain them as clients for a long, long time. Contact me to continue the conversation on how you can dramatically increase your conversion rate by meeting your prospects where they are rather than where you think they should be.